Right guys, so um, this video we're going to look at uh, creating a camera follower script. It's, it's a very simple script, but it will mean that you can essentially, instead of having to parent the camera, the player to the character and all that, the player to the camera, sorry, and do all that kind of stuff, it's just going to work in a lot of a smoother way. There we go. We've got an ice cream van in the background. <laughs> um, but essentially, um, this would work a lot easier, say for instance, if when you killed the player, instead of restarting the level, you were deleting the player and instantiating a new one and it will just find the new player and all that kind of stuff uh, with a, a few small tweaks. Um, this is going to be a quick video because the script's not particularly complex for this. Um, we do need a new script for it, so if we right click, create and go to C sharp, um, I'm going to call this camera follower that because that works um, that's what it is uh, just double click that so we load that up um, and this is fairly simple this next bit um, we're going to declare two variables I'm going to start with a public uh, game object and this is going to be our player we're going to define this in the level um, you can set up a script in the start to then instantly find the player, but this is just easier. Um, and the next thing we are going to set is a private. I'm going to go with a vector three for this, so that it works on multiple different ways. Um, you'll normally you could set play with vector twos if you work in two D, but this would also work for a three D game as well. Uh, so that's why I'm going to do it this way. It's not going to make any difference to us. Um, so at the start, what this is going to do is this is going to reference offset equals transform dot position. So this is finding the position of the camera and then it is minusing the player dot transform dot position. So where you set your camera to in the scene will be the offset from that point forward. So think about that. So maybe taking that into consideration and always have your camera the, for the same distance in all your levels because um, that will work a lot better. Um, we're going to edit this function rather than it just being an update function. I'm going to call this a, a late update function. Um, it just works slightly different and it will kind of be the last thing that updates. Um, so it works quite nicely. Um, and we're just going to type transform dot position equals player dot transform dot position plus offset so we're always re referencing the offset if not the camera would just zoom in and be inside the player you wouldn't be able to see the player so if we've done this correctly um, and make sure to save that control s um, we should then be able to go to the camera add the camera controller to it add the character to it so you can see down here um, and this might not be too obvious because the movement speed on mine is very slow um, so I'm just going to bump that up to 10 and I'm just going to turn that off that we I made in the last video because I don't want to accidentally run into it <laughs> um, but all being well you can see obviously now when I'm jumping when I'm moving around the camera follows the player and if we double check without it being a parent of it. So if the player was to rotate, the camera wouldn't. It's just looking for the position, nothing else. So there we go. And obviously we just died and it's still tracking it. So there we go. Nice quick video on just setting up a very simple camera controller. Um, but yeah, nice one. Uh, thanks a lot. I'll catch you in the next video, guys.